Welcome to Jesus for Nations Ministries. We are so glad that you could join us today. We believe that you will have a blessed time with us. Is it your first time here? We'd love to meet and connect with you on our different social media platforms. We have YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. Join us weekly for our online prayer meetings at 7 o'clock on Wednesday evenings. We also have our student cell groups every week at Sedona High School and Val Student Housing. On Monday at 7 p.m. we have our destiny training. Please register at the information desks. Take your kids to our Ignite Center to learn in fun and innovative ways. Join us this Sunday evening for The Chosen, starting at 5 p.m. here at church. Bus transport will be available. We look forward to seeing you all there. We hope that you will enjoy our service. It's a very important message that I'm going to share with you as the church because we've got a role to play. Listen to me. The church has a role to play when it comes to the unity of our nation. The ch say with me, the church has a role to play when it comes to the unity in our nation. There's a few things you and I need to understand. There's a few things you and I need to actively be in pursuit of if we are going to see unity in our nation, if we are really going to celebrate unity in the diversity, because apart from the fact that we're all different, in our country we have got many different languages, many different tribes, many different races, many different nations. But how many of you know that Jesus are for all the nations? Thank you, Elvis. And my sister here. I said, Jesus are for all the nations. So there's a few things we need to know. But let's start with Psalm 133, verse 1 to 3, where the word of God says, How good and pleasant is it when God's people live together in unity. How good and where there is unity. Where there's unity in your marriage, how good and pleasant that is. Where there's unity in your family. Not every child doing his or her own thing and there's no unity and everybody go their own direction. And when supper times come, you know, it's just daddy, you know, whoever's hungry first, go eat first. No, no, no. Wherever there is unity, can I get a big amen? amen. Say, Lord, give me back the unity for my family. Now be careful because the Lord's going to challenge you this week with those supper times, with those with those times you need to come and sit around the table and do some Bible study. Amen. If you want unity to come back to your family, my dear friend, start to get a time and telling your children and your wife and arrange for a time like this and say, we are going to read from the Bible. We're going to have communion. We're going to pray together. If you can get that right, you will see unity return to your house. So how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. And then he describes how good and pleasant it is. And then in verse 3 he says, It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion. Listen to this. For there the Lord bestows his blessing. Even life forevermore. If you want the blessing of God in your life, you need to make sure that you work, always work towards unity. What is unity? It's peace and harmony it means that we are united by certain goals and certain beliefs it means to be of the same heart and of the same attitude i say it means to be of the same heart the same spirit how many of you know what an opposing spirit is i'm not talking even about a demonic spirit but we can have an opposing spirit you know, we always oppose. We always work against peace. We always work against harmony. You know, when somebody believes in something, we work against that just for the sake of working against it. But that's not Christians. Amen. God wants us to be in unity. 
And where there is unity, there is the blessing of God. Hallelujah. And so therefore as a church, we've got a role to play when it comes to the unity in our nation. As believers, we have a role to play when it comes to achieving unity. Greater unity. And I want to talk to you about unity in the context of our nation here today. Because I've heard many political speeches. <laughs> I've heard many great government officials and leaders standing up and saying their say. And I cannot allow only those people to speak into your life. I believe the word of God must also come to your heart this morning. So let's just look. When it comes to unity, we've spoken about unity and what it means. The blessing where there's unity. There the blessing of the Lord is. But what does, our diver what does diversity mean? Because we're saying that we're here this morning to talk about being united in our diversity because we're all different. The question I have then is where does the diversity come from? <coughs> I think about stuff like that all the time. I don't know about you. I, I, I want to know where things come from, why things work the way they work. It's just how I am rooted or wired rather. You know, I don't know if anybody understand what I'm saying you you want to understand amen so where does diversity then comes from why are we all different different fingerprints different looks different shapes and different sizes and I've discovered this and and different nations different races different languages different ethnic groups where does all where do all those things come from where does difference come from where does the div diversity come from Acts 17, verse 26 to 27. And he made from one man. Say with me, and he made. Who made? Are you with me? Because it's capital H and I have bold and highlighted for you. Who made? How many of you will agree with me this morning there's only one creator? If you agree with me that only God can create, then raise your hand Okay, the rest of you come see me afterwards. We've we, we, we got to enter into some debate here this morning. Amen. Only God can make something. The devil can't make something. You and I can't create something. Only God makes. Can I hear aloud? Amen. Now look at this scripture. This is such a precious scripture here, I'm telling you. God made from one man. Say with me, one man. Uh, there's something interesting you've got to see here. This is only for people who are listening. The rest are going to miss this. Diversity is birthed from unity. Say this with me. Difference comes from oneness. Diversity was birthed out of unity. Only God can do that. That's why he starts. He says, he made from one man. God made Adam, took some soil, <laughs> some clay, formed Adam. Then what does the Bible say? He breathed life. <laughs> Adam. Put him on some heavy, uh, what you call it, anesthetics. <laughs> Gave him a great dose of anesthetics. <laughs> Adam goes to sleep. Is it anesthetics? What do you call it? Yeah. Takes from his side, one rib, makes Eve. So where does Eve come from? Women, please listen very carefully. Where do you come from? <laughs> from the side of Adam. That's why my wife is at my side all the time. There's unity between me and my wife. Amen. Oh, and I love to shout it. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> so God did not make many Adams. Say this with me. God did not make many Adams. And many, he made one Adam. From one Adam came one Eve. They are a unity. They are one. Then God says, now listen to this. He says, I, yeah, so God did not take another Adam piece of soil here with a different composure and then breathe life into that again no 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 one say with me one look at your neighbor tell them uh, key one wabona key one 
How many of you liked our song here this morning? Amen. That was awesome. I wish I could speak more Sutu, but unfortunately I lack. But I'm going to learn and impress you some of these days maybe. Okay. And I'll speak a, a little bit in Afrikaans. And then I'll speak a little bit Sutu until my vocabulary fails. And then I'll return to English if that's okay. That British language. Ish. <laughs> okay. So, and he made from one man every nation. Ish. Did you get that? So where does the Sutus come from? One man. Where does the Zulu, any Zulus here this morning? <laughs> no, she, that's a white Zulu that. <laughs> a causas or there's a causa there. Oh, there's another one here. There's another one. Okay, any other nation here? Sutu. Uh, yes, come on, Jane. What what race? Oh, Sutu. Okay, besides Sutu, what else do we have? Tswana, Vinda, Yenaka Bura in the ice. Oh, come on, give it up for the Bura. <laughs> I even brought my, my khaki on my fellies. Maybe next year I'm going to put on, on some khakis. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so where does all these people come from? All these differences, all the diversity that we do celebrate. Where do they come from? One man. Look at your neighbor, tell them, neighbor, I've got news for you. We all have the same anxiousness. Ki Adam and Eve. Adam and Eva, I swear. Come on, give it up for Jesus. <laughs> It's important that we understand this, that diversity was birthed from unity. And only God could do that. And why did God do that? To point to His creativity. To point to the one who's the Alpha, the Omega. To point to the one who's able to create galaxies and stars and moons. Who created the visible and the invisible. To point to the one, you know, that we cannot confine or comprehend with our little small mentality. Not even science can determine his greatness. Because he gave science as a measuring tool so that we can operate and be pioneers. But he's the creator of all and everything. Hallelujah. Every knee will bow before him. Every tongue will confess that. That he is God. Hallelujah. We all have the same grannies. <laughs> God created us all different. And therefore we can't fight one another. We can't be in conflict with one another based on differences. Differences in terms of race and language and skin color. You know, I think it's pretty shallow, listen to me, to be in conflict because of the difference in skin pigmentation. I think that's shallow. I think it's uneducated. I think something is missing. <laughs> we cannot be in conflict. Diversity is not for conflict. It's for glorifying God. <laughs> Come on, say it with me. Diversity is not for conflict. It's not for fighting. <laughs> it's not for slandering. <laughs> it is for... Come on, preach with me. It is for glorifying God. Give Jesus a big praise. I mean, I'm just reading the Bible. Look at your neighbor, tell them, well, this, he's just reading the Bible. He hasn't said anything. Yeah, he, hasn't, he hasn't done anything yet. He's just reading the Bible. Lucky I'm just reading the Bible. So good to have you, my brother. Lucky doobie. <laughs> now listen to this. He says, so God may create it from one man, every nation. As a matter of fact, some translations even says Adam and Eve. Mankind. Say with me, Mankind. So whenever it comes to mankind, God made. Not evolution. God made. I believe in evolution. Obviously, we're evolving all the time. 
we're getting cleverer, we, uh, you know, we explore science, the tool God gave us, we explore it more and more. But no, 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 when it comes to God's history with mankind, it's a history of 6,000 years. I agree, before mankind, many other things existed, like the pro that they said that the he evolution came, c comes from. But here's the thing, when it comes to God, and humanity God created and listen to Genesis 1 26 to 27 it says God created in the image and likeness man in his image and in his likeness therefore when I wear my t-shirt on heritage day saying be like live like love like man I'm preaching to the world <laughs> hallelujah Listen, I don't care what personality you have or what thumbprint you, your thumbprints look like or uh, I don't care what your face looks like, your shape looks like. Some of us have shapes like this. Some of us have shapes like this. Some have shapes like this. Some have shapes like this. <laughs> it doesn't matter. In the end, we were all created in the image and likeness of God. The message translation says to reflect his nature. That's why we pray, Lord, help me to be like, to live like, to love like Jesus. What a revelation. Hallelujah. So the scripture con continues to say mankind uh, to live on the face of the earth, having determined their appointed times and their boundaries. So God decides these things of their lands and territories. Now listen to verse 27. This was so that they would seek God. The only reason the Bible gives us here for the diversity, for the differences when it comes to mankind is that, that they will all see God. Is that they will? Is that they will? Is that they will seek God? Is that they will serve God? Is that they will worship God? Is that they will be more like their creator? Is that they will be more like Jesus? Live like Jesus. Love like Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. If you believe that, give Jesus a big praise. I'm going to teach some of you some Jackie Chang moves. Because you're not excited enough about the word of God. You know Jackie Chang, who he is. He's that karate guy. He's kicking and jumping and doing crazy stunts. And we should be like that for Jesus. Amen. Come on, let me see if you've got some moves. Let me see something there. Papa. I see some moves. Some of you have got a few moves, but you can work on that. You can work on that. Now, I just want to give you four things here today. And I give it to the church. I give it to believers. I give it to Christians. We understand God blesses unity. We understand where diversity comes from. God made it when it comes to mankind and every other created thing for that matter. Now we understand. Amen comes from God the only reason the Bible gives us here is so that they could all seek God the only reason we have is so that we can give glory to God who is a creative God amen so don't tell me you're not a creative person your nature is to be creative let me tell you something you've got all the creativity you need for your job thank you for the few amens here oh you know I'm not good at this I'm not good at that well that's not your nature not to be good your nature is that you can. You created in the image and likeness of God to reflect His nature. Hallelujah. The more you seek relationship with your Creator, the more creative you become, the more blessed you are, the more prosperous you are. Hallelujah. The more your light shines, the more you see the hand of God in your life. I don't believe when people talk nonsense to me and negative and yes, I, I know God. I oh the pastor preach nice, but you know, reality is the fact of my situation is this. Listen, you can believe in your situation if you want to. I'm not gonna believe in all these negative facts and realities. I serve the God of truth that surpasses reality and negative situations. I'm gonna believe in his word. Hallelujah. I'm gonna believe there's a good future ahead for me. I'm going to believe in the prosperity and the power and the glory of God for my life and I'd like to encourage you to do the same amen so here's four things for Christians so that we can work towards unity again because we all know we're not united as we're supposed to be as a nation hello somebody hello somebody let's you want to talk some real talk here today or you want to have a good feel good message go home and and so on and come back next week for more now let's talk about a few things 
We're not as united as we're supposed to be. We're not united as we're supposed to be. But I believe the more we're working towards unity, the more we will see God opening doors for us as a nation, begin to bless us, begin to bring in the correct leaders, begin to work a new work within our country. Here's what we need to do. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, let's do this. Look at your other neighbor. Say, neighbor, we've got a responsibility when it comes to unity. You know, you know what? You get some people, they are so ignorant. Let me tell you something. If you, as a Christian, don't start to do something, your ignorance will come back to bite you. That, by the way, that's a general rule of ignorance. You ignore something long enough, it will bite you in the end. You ignore the generator that needs a service long enough, it's going to come back one Sunday morning and it won't start. Pa! <laughs> Bitten. <laughs> Let's just say, bitten in the back. <laughs> okay. Are you with me? So here's what I want you to do. Love beyond. Say with me, the first thing is I need to love beyond. Now we've got this scripture here, but we're running out of time. I just want to say we need to love beyond. Jesus told the parable of the Good Samaritan when, they, when he was asked by a, a teacher of religious law. He was asked, Lord, what should I do to get into heaven? And Jesus said, well, follow the commands. Jesus said, he said to, to the Lord, okay, what command? Um, and then he answered, he said, uh, that you will love the Lord your God, that you love neighbor. Jesus said, yes, do that. You'll go to heaven. He says then, but who is neighbor? Because his heart was not right. He's asking many questions. He's living in ignorance, probably. Then Jesus gave us the story of the Good Samaritan. Have you noticed that the Good Samaritan was a person from a different race? Have you noticed that Jesus said in his story was a despised person, but he became the hero of the story of Jesus? There's three things we learn here, because Jewish people considered Samaritans to be very sinful people. They, they considered them to be of a lower class than themselves, because they were from a different race and tribe. So this, when it comes to love beyond, say with me, love beyond. We need to love beyond sin. We hate sin, but we love the sinner. We don't go around condemning sinners. We don't go around judging people, having a critical spirit against... We, no, we love the sinner. We love the sinner, but we hate the sin. We don't make good of sin, don't get me wrong. But we've got to love beyond that. We've got to love beyond social class, background, social status. Say with me, love beyond social class. Social status. We've we got to love beyond these differences of gender and male. Educated, uneducated, poor, rich. Townships, suburban people. <laughs> Are you with me? Say with me, love beyond. If we're going to achieve unity in our nation, we need to learn how to love beyond. Now, I spoke a lot about the meaning of love for the last two weeks. We don't have time to get there. The third one is we need to love beyond race. Say this with me, I must love beyond race. You know what? I'm very intentional when it comes to loving, showing my love for people that, that's got different skin pigmentation than myself. And I've seen when I do that how people open up to me all the time. I've seen it because where I love, there God is. Where I love, God shows up because God is love. Say with me, God is love. When you reach out, man, I can tell you story upon story. You can ask my children, when we order, you know, at McDonald's, there through the window, I, I, sh I, I reach out in love. I make small talk with people everywhere I go. I'm very intentional to love people beyond my own skin color. Very intentional everywhere I go. And it breaks boundaries and it breaks beliefs in people's minds. It breaks it all the time. And people start to open up to you. Say with me, love beyond. Love beyond sin, love beyond social status, love beyond race, very intentionally. Come on, if you believe it, shout a big amen in this place. Give Jesus some praise. I got one hoo-ha here from the men. Are there more men here? Can I hear a loud hoo-ha? I like this. I like this. Wherever you love, Jesus shows up. Oh, man. 
And people smile and people start to make conversation. I'm telling you, if the church can start to love beyond, we're going to see change in South Africa. God bless South Africa. Hallelujah. Second very practical tip here today is understand the struggle. <laughs> Say with me, I, I need to understand the struggle of my people. Yeah. You see, because there's many struggles in our country. And I, I want to tell you if, you, if you, if you ignore the struggles, don't think you can ignore the struggles and it's got nothing to do with you. One morning, if everybody keeps on continuing to ignore the struggle, you will wake up and you will be in the midst of the struggle and it will bite you. You can't, we can't, as a church, ignore the struggles of our country. We've got some real issues here. We've got some real poverty in our nation. We've got gender-based violence. It's a real issue, especially in rural areas. We've got our children getting raped. It's a real issue in our rural areas, whether you like to know it or not. God has called the church to be the light and to be the difference. God has called individual Christians to understand the struggle. Let me tell you something. Load shedding is a real issue, especially when it comes to the economy of this nation of ours. Because people are losing money. They live in anxiety. They don't know how they're going to pay their people. It's a real issue. Corruption under government officials, a real issue. I can tell you story upon story upon story. And then when you get whistleblowers, they get killed. Story upon story. I'm telling you, we've we got to understand the struggle of our country. If we don't understand the struggle of our country, what will we be praying for as a church? When will we get to the debate, to the debate that's going to change things, starting with our own communities and wherever we go? That's why the word of the Lord says clearly in Romans chapter 12, verse 21, Do not let evil conquer you. Evil, evil is the struggles of poor and uh, poverty and rape and GBV and uh, economy uh, uh, that's decaying, infrastructure that's decaying. That's all the evil we see around us. What does the word of the Lord says? But conquer evil by doing what? Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, it's time that we start to do good. We've got to do something. Pray, Lord, help me to be the light, to make the difference. I always pray like this. One morning, I woke up. All of a sudden, Pastor Marisa brings in a little baby. Let's go to those photos. I say, Lord, help me to do good. <laughs> This is me, by the way, in my gown, sipping my coffee. All of a sudden, you know, there comes the baby. Baby handed over to me. Now, we want you to dedicate the baby. Have you ever heard of a pastor dedicating a baby while he isn't not even dressed, drinking coffee? Have you ever heard of something like this? And then they told me the story. Mother, drag, drug addict. Father, you know, uh, into alcoholism. Abusive. Mother, not present can't look after the baby father not present can't look i'm talking about real struggles of our country people you want to know something else a statistic we've got seven million people like that well last time i checked is five million that was more than five years i'm sure we're going for for many more now absent parents that's the struggle it's one of the struggles in our country five to seven orphaned orphans in south africa can we just ignore stuff like that Marisa said to me, I think we should do something. I said, have you prayed about that? Yes, yes, I've prayed about that. <laughs> and this, this little, uh, her name, by the way, is Amuhelang. Amuhelang. I don't know what that means, but apparently, you know, it's, it's got a, meeting, uh, a meaning. So she said, I said, have you prayed? Yes, I've prayed. The baby is getting neglected, and, and one night, she, she, she couldn't sleep one night. I said, what's troubling you? The next day she woke up. She said to me, the Lord says we must help this child. So the granny, the, the way we know about her is because the granny helps us at home. Sina, you've met Sina. She, she visits with us sometime. So S Sina brought the baby and, um, and then Marisa got involved. Say with me, involved. Say with me, understand the struggle and get involved in the struggle. People, listen, I'm talking to Christians today. We need to get involved. And so long story short, Sina is going to look after the baby now, and we're assisting and supporting. And the social worker has given us the go-ahead. Now this little girl is in a nursery, one of the best nurseries in our town. She's got nappies. She's got milk, which she didn't have. She's got people who love her and even a pastor who's dedicated her. 
She's got a taxi taking her where she needs to be. It's just the heart that's, that did not turn a blind eye. It says, let's get involved. Let's conquer evil by doing what? A third one, very quickly. Comes from Colossians 3 verse 13. Make allowance for each other's faults. What are we talking about? We're talking about working towards unity where in our many differences, in diversity. We're talking about South Africa. Amen. So a third one is, first, love beyond. Say with me, love beyond. Say with me, number three, get involved in the struggle. Understand the struggle. And num sorry, number two, number three is acceptance, tolerance, and forgiveness. We need to learn how to accept one another. <laughs> you know, taxi drivers. Do we have a taxi driver here? <laughs> Some taxi drivers, you know, they could really cause a lot of frustration on the roads. <laughs> and you know why? It's because they grew up in townships. How many of you understand the rules in townships are way different than the rules in suburbs? Here's what I want to say. We should move from frustration and irritation to acceptance and love and tolerance. Can some, can some Christians, good Christians, just say amen? <laughs> some of you guys, you, you, you need to... <laughs> you know, our white people can cause a lot of frustration. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know why. Maybe we think different. We grew up different. Maybe, I don't know why. Let's not get to all the reasons. But should we not get to the place where we accept and tolerate? Say with me, tolerate. Bear with one another. And then forgive one another. Amen. Can we forgive one another? We cannot allow the past to destroy the future of this beautiful nation. We cannot continue to use the mistakes of the past to destroy our presence and our future. Christians cannot think like that. We're not, I, I don't care what political party you belong to, but a Christian cannot think like that. God doesn't want us to think like that. Therefore, we read in Colossians 3.13, make allowance. Say with me, I need to make allowance, which means I need to bear with, which means I have to tolerate. Look at your neighbor, tell them, neighbor, please tolerate me. Please, please, just look at your other neighbor. Say, neighbor, please just bear with me for a moment. <laughs> oh, please. We are so different. We grew up different. We don't think the same. We've got different cultures, different traditions. The way we celebrate things are different. And let me tell you, as a white pastor today, I, I want to just apologize. If I offended you in any way, not understanding your culture, will you forgive me? And if, if it's really important to you, come teach me that I can be a better pastor. Because the fact that I'm white has got nothing to do with it. We're all one. I've shown you where diversity was birthed from. It comes, we still have the same ancestors. <laughs> we need to work towards that place again. Amen of unity, my dear people. Will you bear with me? <laughs> I will bear with you. <laughs> you know, these funerals, sometimes they can be very long. Now, I... I don't, in what I do, I just don't have the time. doesn't mean I don't love the people. So I had to ask and say, okay, sh show me how this works. And then remember, I'll be here for that and that, but then I've got to go on. You see, so please, let's work together. Amen. doesn't mean I don't love you. doesn't mean I don't respect you. It, it does, I'll pray. I'll do my best for you. I'll even dedicate your children while I'm still getting to be wake up. <laughs> Amen. Listen to the word of God. Make allowance for each other's faults. That's a big one, isn't it? Oh, we can be so critical. Now, and, and even, listen to me, husbands and wives. Let's make allowance for one another's faults. We're allowed to make mistakes. You're allowed to make a mistake, my brother. I cannot reject you because of your mistakes. I'm allowed to make mistakes. I'm a human being. Oh, no, but you're a pastor. Yeah, but I don't have wings yet. I make mistakes. Will you bear with me? Because deep down here, I love God and I love you. You're going to make mistakes. I will never reject you for your mistakes. Why do we make mistakes sometimes a race thing? We should eradic eradicate that kind of thinking in our lives. Every person makes mistakes. Amen. But then he says... So, make allowance for each other's faults. Forgive anyone who offends you. 
Remember the Lord forgave you. <laughs> so you must do what? Forgive others. Come on. Come on. Can we forgive one another? Listen to me. I'm not saying forgive and forget, even though that's the perfect scenario. When it comes to the past of our nation, I understand there were some detrimental things that happened. I don't want to get into that today. But let's not use that as an excuse every time for things that goes wrong. Let's say, Lord, we're going to forgive. We're going to look for the future. We're going to trust God to do a work of restoration and mending. Lord, show us the way ahead. If Christians, if only the church in South Africa can start to think like that, huge impact is coming. Huge change is coming to our nation. Huge impact. Be careful for political activists that convince you otherwise. Remember, they've got an agenda. They want to go where they want to go. They would rather see our country being destroyed to go where they want to go as individuals, get what they want to get as individuals, than to see our country being rebuilt, restored, revived. I'm preaching to Christians today, black or white or brown or Indian, it doesn't matter. I'm talking to God's people today. We were all coming from Adam and Eve, hallelujah. Let's not allow these things to divide us so quickly. <laughs> oh, Jesus, help us. Man, I'm preaching good here this morning. This is going to help us. It's preaching like this, it's helping the country. Can I hear a loud amen? Take notes here today, people. Ask God to come and do a new work in you. And then the last thing is, let's make some positive proclamations. Proclamations of a better future. There's such a powerful scripture coming from Joel chapter 22 verse 28. You will also decide and decree a thing and it will be established for you. Isn't that powerful? Let's make it personal. For instance, for instance, you battling in your life, you're not happy where you are with something, maybe your financial situation, maybe you feel like you're not going anywhere with your life, you don't know what the future is holding. The Bible says you can declare and proclaim something, the, the sight. Some translation says decree and declare something, and it will be established by God for you if it's in line with God's word and God's will for your life. There are so many promises in God's word. Why don't you start to use some of these promises and start to make proclamations, first and foremost, over your own life, your own family, of a better future. My children will go places. My children will be the head and not the tail. My children will be above and not be below. When the enemy comes in one way to my children, they will be defeated in seven different ways. The hand of God is upon my children. God makes a way for my children. Those are some positive proclamations. Jeremiah 29 verse 11, may I remind you, says that God knows the thoughts that he has for us. Thoughts to prosper us, not thoughts to destroy us. We are allowed to speak proclamations of a better future. You can align your words with God's word and see the power move in your life and see things established in your life and in your children's life and in your future. Hallelujah. Do not get aligned with naysayers, with criticism and critical people and negative people. Be careful with who you surround yourself with. People can take you down. Maybe you meet somebody, you feel positive and good, and then once you've spent a few minutes with them, you feel negative, you feel down. But let's speak life. Proverbs 18 verse 21 makes it very clear that Life and death is in the power of the, whoever uses it will, whoever uses it will get the fruit from that. In other words, you can choose, what do you speak, life or death? I'm going to make some positive declarations and proclamations over my marriage, over my family, over my children, over my finances. And let me tell you, if you're a part of this church, man, I speak life. And when I pray for you, I make declarations about your life. I speak life over this church, over this ministry, because we've got a work to do, not only in our communities and in the Vault Triangle, but in South Africa. Mark my words. You see, the church is a prophetic voice. We shall declare a thing. 
Paul said to the Romans, he says, I believe, therefore I spoke. What is it that you believe? If you believe the wrong thing, if you believe negative, if you believe the worst, it means that your heart's not filled with the word and the promises of God. What is it that you really believe? It's time to align your words with God's word and voice. Voice. Proclamations of a better future for our country. In Jesus' name. I declare and decree that South Africa, in South Africa, there's a future for me. There's a better future for each and every one of you. I declare and decree it's coming. I declare and decree a great revival is coming to this nation. And we're going to see people coming to the Lord like we've never seen it before. I make that proclamation today in the name of Jesus. A great revival is going to struck this country. I declare and decree that prosperity is returning to God's people. I declare and decree we are a country of harmony and peace. I declare and decree political stability. I declare and decree economic growth. I declare and decree unity. Unity in diversity. I speak proclamations over my country. In the name of Jesus, I don't just pray in hopelessness, but I declare and decree. And there's an authority on me and on you because we are God's people, washed by the blood of Jesus, filled with the Spirit of God, having the authority of the promise and the Word of God. And the Word of God that goes from His mouth cannot return void to Him. When we voice His Word, it has to do what God has said it will do. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. That's who you are. And so I've asked this question. And I wrote it down. And as you can see, this is a big moment of the sermon because the music is playing. <laughs> Thank you, my brother. I appreciate you. <laughs> but listen to this. What if every Christian... Listen, listen very carefully this morning. We're celebrating heritage. We're talking about serious issues in our country. But we speak to Christians because Christ, let, let me tell you, Jesus is the answer. And His church, you and I, we're the answer. There's no political party that's got answers. You can study the history of any kind of governing system, democracy, communism, socialism, capitalism. You study them all. There's no answers in the systems of this world. But how many of you understand we're not from this world? We are from the kingdom of heaven here to establish the autocracy of our God who reigns and rules. We are here to establish His will, His, His reign and His rule in this world. Therefore Jesus taught us to pray, let your kingdom, let your, where? As it is where? God wants to duplicate His governing system on earth. That's why we're here. So there's no answer in worldly systems, political systems. Jesus Christ is the answer. If you're a Christian, you've got to believe that. Therefore, we have to love beyond. Therefore, we need to understand and get involved in the struggles of our communities. Therefore, we have to accept, tolerate, and forgive one another. And therefore, we need to change what we say and make some godly proclamations over our country in Jesus' name. So I'm asking the question, what if every Christian refused to speak death or criticize and instead pray for the country and its problems and then get involved in all these struggles whenever possible? What if, I'm asking, and what if we start to voice proclamations of life? What if? And this is what I believe the Spirit of the Lord says. Revival, restoration, peace, harmony, prosperity. That which is the kingdom of heaven will be experienced and received in our nation. What if every Christian, what if every Christian do these four things? Love beyond, get involved in the struggle, tolerate, accept, and forgive. What if? Conquer every evil by doing good and prophesy life instead of death over our country. What if? 
in Jesus' name. I want every eye to be closed, every head to be bowed for a moment. Father, I give you praise and glory for your word this morning. I pray that you bless your people. Lord, we pray for our country, and in a moment, I want everybody to pray for the country for a few minutes. But Lord, this morning, I pray for every person who's in this place. I pray that you do a new work within every heart and every life. May we strive towards, work towards unity whether it's families, whether it's our marriages, whether it's our children, whether it's in the workplace, Lord, that we will never be the proponents of diversity. We know the devil works with this strategy to divide and conquer. Today I pray, Lord, that we will be a people who's in pursuit of peace. I pray it in Jesus' name. If you're in this place today and you need Jesus, you've heard me preached but while you're sitting here, you become aware that you, there's a distance between you and the Lord. You want to return to the Lord Jesus. You want to give your heart and life to Jesus. You know that you've lost your fire. You've lost your anointing. You've lost your passion. You really want to serve God. You really want to be the light in this world, starting with your own family. You really want to catch up on your anointing and your calling again this morning. You want to be the difference. You want to return to God. I want to pray with you. Say, Lord, I give my heart and life to you. Come into my heart. I want to surrender my life to you again. That you quickly raise your hand right there where you are so that I can pray for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Many hands are going up in this place. You may lower your hands again. What will we win through this service if people are not reunited with Jesus? Nothing. In the end, Jesus is calling each and every one of us today to be more like Him, to live more like Him, to love more like Him. If you've raised your hand, just pray this prayer after me right there where you're seated. I'm going to ask the whole church just to pray with them. Pray this after me. Father God, thank you so much that you loved me. This morning, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is the only way, the only truth, and the only life. Here's my life, Jesus. I surrender myself to you. I'm sorry for allowing me, myself, to, be, to, to drift apart from you. Forgive me all my sins. I repent. I'm coming back. Fill my heart with your love. Holy Spirit, come live in me. Lead me as from this moment. Help me to be the light. Help me. To be the difference in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Come on, let's make it loud for Jesus. Let's make it really loud. Let's make it really loud for Him. The Word of God says when one person returns, amen. It doesn't speak of a new convert. It speaks of one of those sheep that got lost. It says heaven rejoices over one person, amen. And so today there were many people returning to the Lord. May God bless you and keep you. And if you're here, if you visited, if it's the first time here this morning, I want you just to go out, before you go out, to, to pay a visit to the information desk and give us all your details. Amen. My lovely wife wants to say something. Wow, that's a first. Come on, give it up. Hi, everybody. Yeah, you just showed a photo of Amigolang and you said we didn't know the meaning of her name. So for the first time, I Google it like five minutes ago. Do you know what it means? <laughs> I need to share this with everybody. I know, I know. So it means it's a South... It's Sorry, yes, I'm yes. Yes. So hear it out. It is a South African name and it means accept, receive or welcome. Can we get that photo again, Elvis? Just, just check the photo. Again, yeah. So it's... Oh, let me just get my Google... 
So it's an African South Africa. Where's the photo? Oh, you have it. So he's putting Elvis, it on. Just go back. Please back, start. back. I, I, if you've got money, please, you need a new computer. <laughs> so yeah, since she was, you made a part of the sermon, I think her name really presents what the message is all about. Um, accept, receive, or welcome. And so when you Google accept, similar names for that is, do you want to know? Respect, to give in to one another, to recognize one another, and to acknowledge one another. That is the similar for accept. So, oh, so please so give God some praise. Amen. 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 So you said accept, accept, tolerate, respect, welcome. Go along, go along with. Commend, oh. Give in to, recognize, bow to. Bow to. And honoring. It's honoring, honoring one, one another. Wow. Amuchelang. Lord bless this baby. And may this be symbolic here this morning. That as, to be honest, we're actually one nation. Because we're South Africans, isn't it? <laughs> we're one nation. We South Africans. May God bless you. Amen. What are those four things we need to do? Love beyond. What was the second one? Get involved in the struggle. And then the third one was what she said. Accept, tolerate, honor, forgive. Go along with one another. Man, you are so anointed. You are so anointed. <laughs> Amuchalong is an anointed baby. <laughs> and what was the fourth thing? Voice, proclamations, positive proclamations of a country. Amen. And let's pray for our country and let's show the love that we have as a church for one another. Let's go show it in the world out there. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Let's raise our hands for the blessing here this morning. Father, we thank you so much for this time together. Lord, I just want to come and bless your people today in your name. And I pray that your love and your grace and your power be with them as we leave here today. But Lord, we also want to intercede for our country today, South Africa. We've come a long way, Lord, and we've got a long way to go. We acknowledge the conflict in our country. We acknowledge the problems. We acknowledge the struggle of the poor. We acknowledge the struggles of GBV, of economic issues, political issues. We acknowledge the struggles of the rich. We acknowledge the struggles of our children who's getting raped. We acknowledge the struggles, Lord, of decay of infrastructure. And we can go on and on and, Lord, and on, Lord. But as a church today, we don't want to point fingers. We want to love beyond. We want to get involved. Lord, we want to accept and forgive and tolerate and go along with. And we want to proclaim a better future for all. And so as a church today, we make intercession for South Africa. And Lord, we pray that we will achieve unity in our diversity. And that you will come and move your hand over our country and do what only God can do. You are the answer. You are the solution. In Jesus' name. I want you just to take 30 seconds right there where you are and just pray your own prayer. Pray for South Africa. Maybe you are falling short in one of these four places. You don't love beyond. You don't get involved in the struggle. You're still playing the ignorance game. Maybe you, you know, you, it's difficult to accept, to tolerate. You're still frustrated and irritated by many things and many people. You need to forgive. Come on, let's speak to God for a moment in this place. And maybe you have gotten entangled in some negative talk and criticism. And all you can do is point fingers and criticize. But God wants you to make some positive declarations. Just for another 30 seconds, just open your heart before the Lord. Asking Him in your own words for unity in our diversity. In Jesus' name. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, my Father. We worship you. Thank you that you hear every prayer, every heart, every cry. Heal our country. Help us to rebuild. Lord, we see a better future for all. 
bring it into existence here this morning. We love you. We appreciate you. See our nation. See our heart cries. In Jesus' name. Be blessed. Amen. Give Jesus a big praise. <clears throat> Thank you so much for coming out. May the Lord bless you this afternoon. <clears throat> Remember, we do not have any chosen meeting tonight, but we're looking forward to see you soon. God bless. Please do get in contact with us. We would love to hear from you. Also find us online on Facebook, YouTube and Instagram at Jesus for Nations Ministries or JFN Ministries. And we'll see you online.